Hey everybody, welcome back to the latest episode of what crazy vintage gear did I buy and where will I put it in my house? But today I finally found something I've, I've been looking for for a while now. Uh, I used to own one a few years ago, but I bought it at a garage sale or something and it was rotted out and it never really worked. So I flipped it and I've been looking ever since to find another, but this is a 1967 Fender Vibratone. And basically this is something Fender made in the late 1960s. Uh, it's basically a Leslie cabinet for guitar. And there weren't that many made. I don't think they really caught on. And so Fender ended up discontinuing them. And for whatever reason, they're really tough to find nowadays. But today I uh, wanna tell you guys a little bit of interesting history that I have found on these. And also uh, I wanna take the front grill cloth off here so we can get to the mechanism inside that rotates this styrofoam cone. But anyhow, it's it's got this kind of knocking sound every time it comes around. So hopefully we can mitigate that. And then I wanna experiment and put some microphones on this thing and try to capture the sound because it is really cool when you're live in the room with this thing. It's the most crazy swirly chorus sound and uh, hopefully I can, I can capture that for you guys. But anyways, the main reason I wanted to find one of these is because Stevie Ray Vaughan was a big user of the Vibratone. Uh, there are some bootlegs of him. You can find him using this for the whole show, it seems. And then on songs like Cold Shot and things that I used to do and probably some others, uh, you can hear the Vibratone in studio. Also, uh, Mike Campbell uses the Vibratone of, of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. I found some photos of his, which is the later version with the uh, Vibratone badge on the front. And also I found an interesting video from 1971 on the Dick Cavett Show, Gary Wright and Wonder Wheel. And you can see George Harrison in this video playing a 1950s Stratocaster and the Vibratone is in the background. So I felt that was kind of interesting to see it live in action in the, in the early 70s. But other than that, I can't really find out a whole bunch of information on who used these. Uh, of course, there were tons of great albums uh, back in the day where you can hear similar sounds, but it's, it's hard to say if it was just a pedal being used or if it was a, a Leslie cabinet being used. If you guys know of any anyone else who used specifically a Fender Vibratone, maybe you used one, uh, drop a comment and, and let us know. That'd be interesting to read. Now today, there are some guys who still use these live and that's a very respectable thing to do because they are really finicky and uh, and hard to maintain, but uh, when you when you do have them running right, there's really nothing else like it when you're sitting in the room with this thing, so. But a friend of mine, Wes Jeans in the Dallas area, he uses one live. Um, Eric Tesmer in Austin, Texas, he also uses the Vibratone live. He's, he gets some really cool tones and he goes deep into these things. Um, Philip Sace also is known to use these live and in studio, and I, I'm a huge fan of, of his tones. Uh, my friend Nick also has one and, and you'll occasionally hear from it on his YouTube channel as well. So I think next let's go ahead and open this this front grill cloth and take a look inside and see what's going on. Try to get it running a little bit smoother and then let's record this thing and, and check it out. All right so three screws on either side of the baffle to get this thing out and should just slide out here. Here we are. There's the back side of it. It's like a particle board. It says 152 there. But it looks to be in good shape. And then inside, it's a little bit dusty, but uh, we've got some documentation down here at the bottom. It says Leslie Tremolo unit model 16 i believe that's what that says here is the rotating cone as you can see let's take a closer look at the motor and the belt and everything and see if we can maybe get this thing running a little bit smoother so there's kind of a balance with the tension of the belt whether it's too tight or too loose i tightened it up a little but i don't know how well i can get this thing to function so let's turn it on and and see how it works all right so the power button is on the back side here Flip the power on, fires right up. 
So I was hoping there was something obvious inside here that I could fix and maybe tighten up and get this thing to uh, work a little quieter, but nothing seemed to help. So uh, I ended up pulling off this styrofoam mechanism and there's a couple screws, one up here, one here, pulled this whole assembly out. And then I could notice that the that styrofoam cone was kind of loose. And so I was able to tighten it up a little and greased everything, put it back together. I did tighten up the uh, belt that's that's underneath here and it seemed to correct the issue. I mean, I'm sitting right here with this thing running and it seems to be dead quiet. And uh, I got the microphone right here. I mean, there is a little audible sound from this thing operating, but otherwise it's, it seems to be dead quiet. But uh, I'll show you guys the fast setting here real quick. You can tell it is a little noisier, but it's it's mostly just like the noise of the wind and this thing running. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty quiet. So I'm really excited about this because now there is the possibility of using this thing to get some really cool sounds and use it for recording. And, and uh, I think it'll be fun. So let's throw some microphones on this thing and see how it sounds. <laughs> All right, guys, well, thank you so much for being here and uh, watching and supporting my efforts to document this cool vintage stuff. Uh, I will say I didn't get as good of a sound as I hoped for. I, I think it still sounded really good considering it's all original and basically exactly the way it left the factory 50 years ago, which it is cool to to get gear like this that's really untouched and be able to document that sound as it was but you could hear there was kind of a speaker rattle going on and i think these speakers were were or this speaker was really kind of underpowered anyway uh to be ran by a, a hundred watt head or even a 50 watt head uh so it's definitely gonna have to be replaced so i tried my best to just kind of play a little bit more delicately and and show off some chords and stuff like that so you can really hear the sound uh, I didn't end up panning it full left and right because I, I tried that at first and it, it sounded so swirly that it was kind of like, kind of made me nauseous a little bit. It was it was so trippy. So uh, I ended up just keeping it pretty much centered and uh, it sounded really good. And honestly, when you hear this in the room, you're not hearing it come and leave from the left and right. You know what I mean? You're just hearing it 
just kind of moving around in the room. So I think that's more of a natural sound of, of how this thing actually would sound in person. Uh, like I said previously, if you guys know any other players who for sure used a vibratone and didn't use a Leslie or, or something else in the studio or whatever, uh, drop a comment and, and let us know. I think in the comment section, we end up learning a lot of cool stuff. And if you happen to own one or, or used one uh, back in the day, uh, let everybody know. That would be cool to read as well. But um, definitely in the future, you can expect an updated video on this one. Um, putting a new speaker in there and deleting the, the crossover. Um, that's one thing that does make it sound a little kind of honky and mid-rangey because uh, allegedly, I guess, the crossover directs the treble and the bass signal to another amplifier, theoretically, and the, the vibratone is just getting these mids. Uh, I'm not sure why they designed it that way, but that's how it operates from the factory. So that's what you were hearing. I still think it sounded really good. And I was trying to kind of, you know, work with that on my, on my amp, kind of pushing it uh, in the, in the treble range a little bit more to, to kind of give it a more balanced sound. But I, I think it really sounded good. The chords were, were really cool sounding and you could hear how this thing could be used on recordings and really get an incredible sound. But, uh, and also, like I said, check out some of the guys who I mentioned earlier who are actually, you know, using these things live and, and in studio uh, and, and, and have a great sound. It's, it's something cool to be able to go hear stuff like this in person. It's, it's definitely different. So uh, I wanna say thanks again for everybody watching, everybody who joins me here on this channel. And uh, if you wanna help support, the best thing to do, just comment on my videos, watch the videos, share the videos. Uh, that's, that's it, that really helps and, and it's gone a long way to, uh, to help me be able to do cool stuff like this and bring it to you guys. So thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.